Welcome back to the channel. I'm Colin and I make videos about audio products and mechanical keyboards. This video will be my review on the Fossey Audio ZD3. A couple weeks ago, I made an unboxing and walkthrough video of the ZD3. If you haven't watched that yet, I have linked it in the description box below. The ZD3 is Fossey Audio's first fully balanced desktop deck. It uses a single ES9039Q2M DAC chip from ESS has multiple input options including USB, coaxial, optical, Bluetooth and even HDMI input. There are two sets of outputs including a set of RCA and XLR outputs. The ZD3 is capable of op and proling, allowing you to fine tune the sound according to your liking. All this comes at a price of $179. Last, I'll record a sound demo of the ZD3 compared to some other decks I have so you can hear and decide for yourself. The ZD3 is really well built. The aluminium case is well rounded, and the front plate is really thick and well made. I really like the use of the round OLED screen on the front. It's OLED so you won't see the backlight bleed into the blacks in a dark environment. Usually devices in this price don't have screens as nice as this one, so it's great that we see an OLED screen here. The only nitpick is on the feel of the knob. It does have a bit of play on it. The opinion on the looks of the ZD3 is quite subjective, but I think it looks great. I like the fact that you can also swap out the orange knob for a grey one, if you prefer a more low-key look. Fossey Audio sells them on their AliExpress store. As I mentioned in the previous unboxing video, the ZD3 is a super simple and straightforward device. It doesn't even have a manual system. The ZD3 just works the moment you plug it in. Other than the device inputs, screen on off, volume and play pause buttons on the remote, there's nothing else you need to adjust. It's a great plug and play device with a simple user interface by design. As for the digital filters on the ESS chip, Fossey has chosen one for the ZD3 and disabled the rest. I think that it would be the best for the manufacturer to choose the best filter that performs the best with their device, like Fossey has done. But if you're someone that likes to play around with digital filters, this may be a drawback for you. One more complaint that I have is that there's no auto sleep feature or screen timeout feature on the ZD3. So this is my setup for the ZD3 and how I have been using it for the past two weeks. I have been using it with my Genelec 8010A's and 7040A subwoofer through its XLR outputs. It's a 2.1 active speaker setup. They are usually hung on the wall. So I just taken one unit down for the sake of this video. I have also been using the Atom 2 headphone amp on the RCA outs. Most users will probably use the ZD3 with other Fossey audio amps like the ZA3 and the V3s. But since active speakers are what I use most, I'll share my experiences of using the ZD3 with my Genelec Studio monitors. The ZD3 has one set of fully balanced XLR outputs and one set of RCA outs. These two outputs will play simultaneously. There's a bypass switch under the device to bypass the preamp, but you can adjust the output separately, meaning that you can either have two sets of line outs or two sets of pre outs, and they will both play simultaneously. This may be a problem if you have a setup like mine. If I bypass the preamp and use the Atom 2 as a headphone amp, my speakers will be playing at full volume as there aren't any mute switches for the outputs, and if you're usually using studio monitors like I am, they usually won't have a volume knob or an easily accessible power switch on the front, but there's a workaround for it. That's why I bought this passive preamp. It's basically a volume control and it allows me to break the signal to mute the speakers when I'm using headphones. I bought this from AliExpress for about 50 bucks. If you're someone like me that needs to connect a ZD3 to a headphone amp and a pair of studio monitors, I've linked this preamp in the description box below. But if you're only using one set of outputs on the ZD3, or if you have active speakers that have volume control, this won't be an issue for you. This is how I would connect the ZD3 to the preamp. I put the ZD3 into bypass mode and output a line out signal to the preamp. 
and then the XLR outs will be connected to my Genelec monitors. This way I can adjust the volume for the monitors and also use the volume control of the Atom 2 to control my headphone volume. The ZD3 has Bluetooth and supports bit rates up to 24-bit 48kHz. The connectivity is good and I never had any Bluetooth transmission problems with the ZD3. But the ZD3 does not support LDAC. This may or may not matter to you depending on how often you use Bluetooth. You can also use the USB input if you like to play high-res files. Also note that the ZD3 does not allow you to connect to multiple Bluetooth devices at the same time. So just keep that in mind if you will be using Bluetooth. For USB input, you may not be able to adjust the system volume on some host devices. According to my test, you can adjust the volume on Android phones. For iPhone and Macs, you won't be able to adjust the volume in the operating system. I don't have a PC to test out the volume control on that. For the other inputs, there's honestly not much to talk about. They all worked as intended for me. I tried the HDMI input with my LG TV at home, and it was able to power on and off and adjust the volume of the ZD3 through the TV remote. But I can't say if it would work with every other TV model. In my previous unboxing video of the ZD3, I showed a set of extra JRC 4580D op amps. I just wanted to clarify that the new orders do not include an extra set of op amps anymore. But you can still purchase other op amps to replace the stock LME 49720 op amps. I'm not going to talk about op amp rolling in this video as I'm still experimenting with different op amps. If I find something interesting or worth talking about, I might make another video in the future. I'll demo three decks in total to demonstrate the sound characteristics of the ZD3. So here we have the ZD3 that uses an ES9039Q2M chip. The FIO BTA30 with the AK4490 chip. And the Topping DX3 Pro Plus with an ES9038Q2M chip. To keep everything as constant as possible, I'll output the signal using the RCA ports of the DAX to my Zoom F3 field recorder. This will be a blind test and I'll tell you which is which and my thoughts after the sound demo. Please also note that the DAC chip is only a part of a DAC and how a manufacturer implements it will also affect the performance of a DAC. Lighten up, take me on your magic river. Tell me all your dreams align. Sign me up and tell me about the people that you know who are trying to feel alive. Sign me up and tell me about the people that you know who are trying to feel alive. Life can get hard, so honey, if you need to cry, just come share my.
So did you hear any differences between the three decks? I'm not sure how much you can still hear after YouTube compression. I forgot to mention that they were all connected using USB and not Bluetooth for the demo. The test track was played from a MacBook Pro. Deck A was the BTA30, Deck B was the ZD3, and Deck C was the DX3 Pro Plus. Honestly, all three decks are very close in sound, but after doing a lot of A-B testing, I was able to pick a few minor details between the three decks. First, I felt that the soundstage of the ZD3 and the DX3 was wider and deeper than the BTA30. Everything on the BTA30 just sounds slightly more forward. For the upper mids and highs, I think that the DX3 has more clarity and sounds more pronounced than the ZD3 and the BTA30. But the ZD3 and BTA30 sounds more natural in the upper region to my ears. For the mids and vocals, the BTA30 is more in front, the ZD3 and DX3 sounds pretty much the same to my ears. There's more depth between the singer and the instruments. Last, for the bass, I think the bass of the ZD3 sounds a bit more pronounced as it feels like it has a slower decay. Let me know if you heard a difference and which one you prefer. In conclusion, I think the ZD3 is very good deck in the price range having multiple outputs and having balanced output capabilities. I couldn't find any decks in the price range having an HDMI input. So if you're using this in your living room, I think it will be very compelling. Although I think there is still room for improvements in adding more control over the outputs and adding an auto sleeve feature to power off the ZD3. However, despite these nitpicks, I think the ZD3 is a great choice for a budget deck. It's straightforward and easy to use. I would recommend it to those who are looking for a deck under the $200 range. I hope you enjoyed the review and found it useful. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. And please subscribe to the channel and like the video if you enjoyed it.